Hi, I'm Faith Barnes. I am the Phelps County Tax Collector. I am finishing up my first term in office. It's an elected position and I'm excited to represent Phelps County for another four years. So I work in the collector's office and at the county level we have two offices that actually kind of get mixed up. We have the assessor's office and we have the collector's office. The assessor's office is where people go to get assessed for your vehicle, which is called personal property, or for your real estate, which is real estate. My office gets the information from the assessor's office and that produces a tax bill. My office then collects the money for the county, the states, and the different taxing authorities. One issue that we come across is when people move into our county, they don't realize that they need to go to the assessor's office to establish an account. So when people have either a car or a home, they need to go to the assessor's office to establish that account so that we can then send them a tax bill. And that's often overlooked. People wrongly assume that because they have a vehicle that the assessor's office will look that information up and automatically know. And that's not correct. That people do need to go into the assessor's office, establish that account and register with them, whether they own a home or it's a vehicle. So tax season's around the corner and we get our information from the assessor's office um, so we know who to send the tax bill to. If, it, if we get that information on around October, so anytime after October 1st and someone buys or sells a home, we do not have that information. So again, the burden is placed on the homeowner to come to our office. So we would need to know who the new buyer is and another issue that comes up is when people have a, um, a mortgage and it's escrowed, they wrongly assume that the escrow company will contact us and let us know, and that also is incorrect. State statutes say that the burden is on the taxpayer, so if you do receive um, late fees or fines, we cannot refund that because um, the taxpayer needs to make sure that they come to our office. And uh, again, after that October 1st, it's really important that the homeowner comes directly to the collector's office and uh, updates their mailing address so that we can send them the tax bill. So the process that we have at the county level is that when someone buys a home, that information is then recorded with recorder of deeds. The recorder of deeds sends that information over to the assessor's office. The assessor's office, they are basically the keeper of the database. Any permanent change to addresses take place with the assessor's office. So the assessor office gets that information, but it could take anywhere from 30 to 90 days to upload into their system. After that, then that information goes to the collector's office. So again, we have that, um, that pause in the information. So it's really important, especially after that October 1st, that people come directly to the collector's office. That's not a permanent change uh, because again, that has to take place with the assessor's office. But if it's after October 1st, we do need to know immediately um, if someone has sold or purchased a home in Phelps County. Phelps County has a lot of military personnel, um, either retired, they are stationed at Fort Leonard Wood, or we have the young men and women who are joining from here. So we love our military families. There are some obstacles that come up. Um, first, when someone, a military family moves from out of state, they don't understand necessarily our laws about personal property taxes or even real estate taxes. The state of Missouri puts that burden on the taxpayers though. So it's important to understand that the taxpayer does need to go to the assessor's office to register, whether it's for the vehicle or whether it's for their real estate, so that they're in our system. If you are a person that lives in Phelps County and you're joining the military, this is called your home of residence. So whether you go to boot camp in Georgia or Texas, you're still responsible for your personal property taxes here. And, um, so that's your home of record. If you are moving here and you have a home of record somewhere else, make sure you do register with our assessor's office, but most likely you will get a waiver um, that you don't owe taxes for us because your home of record somewhere else. And then for our retired military personnel, 
Um, if you lived in a state that didn't have personal property, that's uh, taxes on your vehicles, taxes on your boats, motors, stuff like that, just know that we do have those taxes. Only 11 states don't, but if you're, you come from one state that doesn't, that's something new, please make sure that when you do move to Phelps County that you register with the assessor's office so that we can get you a tax bill and that you're not paying these late fees um, because unfortunately I can't waive any of these late fees. Um, state statute says it's illegal and I could lose my job. So um, make sure that you do that. Also the assessor's office, if you do not fill out your assessment form, that's a long form that you fill out about the vehicles that you do own. If you don't fill that out on time, they can also assess a penalty. A question we get a lot is about deployment. So there is a state statute that does say that if a military personnel is deployed, um, and this is something that's approved by the governor or the president of the United States, that when they come back they have from their deployment that they have 90 days to pay without um, incurring any late fees or penalties. But we do need proof of that deployment. That is different than if you uh, go to say basic training or you go to another state to serve in the military that's not the same as a deployment you don't have deployment paper so if you get a tax bill uh, or actually move we do need to know your new address because we will send you a tax bill and you don't have that 90-day grace period to pay without penalties uh, or interest it's just if you have your deployment papers that are signed by the governor or the president of the United States